Hello, 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 and welcome to Jesse James Beads. How are you doing today, my friends? What I need from you is just a quick wave to let me know that you can both see me and hear me okay. Make sure that we're actually broadcasting safely. I have done a test and everything seemed fine, but it's always good to get a quick double thumbs up from you. How are you today? We've had a lovely day of weather here in the UK. It's been a bit rainy in the week, but we needed it because it's been super dry and hot. How are things where you are? Let's get those weather reports flying on in. If you have not seen myself before, my name is Jem. I live in the United Kingdom, slap bang in the middle of England, and I'm broadcasting to you directly from my home in Oxfordshire. So, hello, how are you? How's everything on your side of the pond? How are you all around the world? Just drop me a quick wave to let me know that you can hear me. For our work today, what we are going to do is be inspired by the JJB Summer Bead Blast. If you haven't seen anything about this, head on over to your preferred social media and check it out. Every week we've got a new phrase or word just to explain something that you can be inspired by. I have got Anne in from California. She said it's hot today as it's starting to be swim weather. I bet it is. Deb is in. Hello, Deb. How are you, sweet pea? Glad to see that you're here and that you can hear me too. It's always a bit of a question mark because it's just me, Billy No Mates, in a studio by myself. How are things? I hope that you're doing well. So if you've not seen the JJB Summer Bead Blast, it's a phrase or selection of words that are there for inspiration. Sometimes as a jewellery maker, we get stuck in the doldrums and we're not really quite sure what we want to be making. I tend to just grab my pliers and start doodling with wire. Maybe if you're a beader or a seed beader or you work with macrame instead, there's a different process that you follow. But the Summer Bead Blast is a great way to help you just have a little bit of kick of inspiration to get you picking up your Jesse James beads beads and cracking on with some beautiful jewellery designs. Huggles, Gem and everyone from Jessica. I love your necklace. Is there a tutorial for it? Coming up soon, my darling, over on YouTube at Gem Hawks. That's Gem with a J and Hawks with an E. Not at the beginning, otherwise that would be E Hawks and that makes no sense. There is a tutorial for this piece coming very, very soon. It might be this Sunday. I can't remember my own schedule, so, you know don't really know where I'm going unless my phone tells me to go a place talking of which I hope I put it on silent it wouldn't be very professional if I hadn't good lord I wonder let's have a look shall we see shall we see if my phone is on silent do you want to see a photo of my son and me ah it's disappeared it was on silent I see I'm say semi-professional <laughs> so this week's JJB inspiration our summer bead blast is well connected you can take that to mean exactly what you want, whether it means utilising ready-made connectors. Now, I absolutely adore these magnetic connectors and quite frequently I will make that the feature of a necklace and have it either on the collarbones or even right down at the front. So that's a connector. That's a valid interpretation of this week's JJB Summer Bead Blast. Love the necklace too, says Jessica. Thank you so much. Deb, love, love all your creations. Thank you ever so much. I really, really appreciate that. Big love to you from me and everybody at Jesse James Beads. So using connectors in ways that perhaps they weren't designed to be used is always kind of cool. 10 minutes ago, there was a chain reaction right here. So on many of the chain reaction strands that we have, you'll find a split ring on one end holding it all together. I love those little split rings. If I could buy hundreds of them, they'd be really handy. So that's another form of connector. So if you haven't yet done your inspiration for the JJB Summer Bead Blast this week, give it a go, be inspired, make yourself some S clasps or use ready-made S clasps, but use them in a way that they're not designed to be made. That's an idea. Or just get funky and create your own connectors. There's well and truly so many different ways that you can interpret that design prompt it's just a bit of a let's do something let's all get involved if you 
choose to share your makes on social media. Don't forget JJB Summer Bee Blast as your hashtag. If you're a little bit shyer, then join us on the Facebook group, which is the Jesse James Secret Stash, where a horde of like-minded jewellery lovers all cluster together. There's never any judgment. We love to see new people's work and we love to welcome you with open arms to share your creativity with us too. Also, sometimes there might be a prize to be won and that's kind of cool. Deborah says, hi y'all, first time here. Well, welcome, welcome to you. You've joined a group of wonderful creatives from around the globe. My name is Jem. I'm representing Jesse James Beads all the way from the United Kingdom. Deborah says, love JJB. Well, welcome to you. We love you right back. For today, we're going to be looking at the prompt, Well Connected, and I've decided to share with you my homegrown Clover 1 into 3 connector. What's a 1 into 3 connector? Well, let's have a look. On the bust just here, I've taken three different colours of the heart chain. Can I just tell you how much I adore this heart chain? If I could make every single necklace for every single pendant I've created, and that's literally thousands, I would always choose heart chain. It's gorgeous. I have popped a link in the video description to 18 gauge round wire in a couple of colour choices. I've also popped a link to the heart chain. Now, there are three strands here in graduating lengths, and they've got this little clover connector in the corner and let's see if I can show you that even vaguely on this camera I am going to show you on the overhead in just a moment but it shows you how you can take a single chain round the back for comfort and then drape it down into three different strands now full disclosure I have used Pantone 2023 strands for my piece on the board I didn't even restrand them. I very carefully removed the crimps from either end and then I threaded on a couple of new crimps and closed them up. So super, super easy and super, super achievable. Many of the strands from Jesse James Beads that come on a card like this have got around about an inch to an inch and a half of extra beading thread on one end. So if you cautiously squish open the crimp you can even reuse that if you're stuck in a pinch and you can't find your beading threading material then it's a win so let's have a look down at the board at the other piece that I've created for you today let me just switch a route down to this one so these are all Pantone 2023 strands can you get the magnetic connector on the site I'm unable to abandon you all and go and have a look for it now but I'm almost certain like 99% certain that you can get them so if you go to the section for clasps I'm pretty sure it'll come up hello sassy welcome my darling all the way from sunny Cheshire I hope all is well with you my lovely what's your post box yep yeah. Okay, so let's have a quick talk about these strands. This is Pantone 2023, a colour for everyone in this collection. And again, I've popped a little link in the video description, which will show you what available strands there are. Now, as I mentioned, I didn't even bother restranding them. I simply prized off the little crimp and then put it back on with new crimps. Now, what you'll see is that the ivory coloured one, I don't actually remember the name of the strand, many apologies. I actually took off a couple of pieces from the end to make this shorter. The middle length one, I just put a single crimp on at the end. Let's just spin that around. And then the green one, I added a couple of extra beads to the ends. And in that way, they graduate in length. And overall, with this one, there's about around about half an inch to three quarters of an inch difference between the smallest the medium and the same again between the medium and the longest with the chain it was about an inch because it just drapes a little bit more lovely celia is in from lancashire slipped at the weekend and slow doing anything you my love just take care so what i'm going to show you to make today is my clover connector it's a one into three or if you prefer three into one 
Whichever way you cut it, you've got three access points on one side and one on the other. It is achievable, even if you have very limited wire handling experience. If you can see any yellow on my fingers, I was handling a great big bag of turmeric today at work. So uh, yeah, I haven't picked up any nastiness there. It's just a little bit of turmeric and that stains. So why don't we move this just up like a happy little smile to the corner and I'll leave one side showing just up here so you can reference back to what we're making together. Now with this, you can use a 1.25 or 16 gauge wire if you want to, but I would recommend to get your eye in, to get experienced in making this, go for an 18 gauge round wire. Feel better soon, Celia, my love. I have here around about 15 inches of 18 gauge wire. I've just grabbed scrap from my pot because it was there. It's the very end of a reel in an antique bronze colour. Now you can get silver or brass at the moment online at our website. Have a gander and you'll find something suitable in terms of what style can be craft wire can be German style it doesn't really matter so let's make sure that both of those ends are flush cut they are indeed and let's start by warming through this strand and again it's around about 14 or 15 inches of 18 gauge round wire now if you're brand new to wire I know we have the new uh, lovely Deborah with us today Warming the wire through will give you a little bit of extra flexibility while it retains that heat and then after a little while it will become stronger. So what we're doing is we're exciting the electrons in the copper. This is a copper core wire. It does work the same for many metals, most of the ones that are used in jewellery wire anyway. So that's just giving it a little extra flexibility. So what we're going to do is come about two and a half inches from one end and turn a right angle on that wire. What I want to do now is to create the circular form that forms the one side of the one into three connector, or as I like to call it, the clover connector. If a stretch of the imagination is possible, it's a little bit like a clover leaf, a little bit. Now you can use your round nose pliers or you can grab your bale makers or any round form like a chopstick, for instance, if you have any. What we're going to do is to create a round form on the end just here. So let's just use my basic round nose pliers. Start off by creating kind of half or a shepherd's crook kind of style there. And then we're going to continue by wrapping that wire all the way around and over the top. I've got longer sleeves on today and they keep catching on things. So I'm just going to finish off by bringing that so that it crosses over the angle where we made that right angle. And I'm going to give that a quick squish to keep it nice and strong. The reason I'm doing that is because we made the wire softer by warming it through. This will help it to harden up a little bit quicker than just leaving it. So if I catch this on something whilst I'm working, it shouldn't unravel too badly. Of course, this is a good colour to work with. It really shows up on the camera there. Lovely. So what we're going to do now is to imagine how long a distance we want in the neck section. So I've added a coil over the surface of my clover leaf connector. You don't have to, you can go for really super clean lines if you prefer, but I'm popping a coil on just because it looks nice and neat and tidy and I enjoy putting coils on everything. <laughs> so the distance between the very, very centre point of our connector and the angle at the bottom of that wrapped loop, it will become a wrapped loop later, sorry, that's what we're looking to measure now. So if I just gently turn that wire around at about 45 degrees away from the straight. So if that's the straight line, let's pop it on the straight line on here. It's halfway between those two angles. That's where we're going to start today. Now I might grab my bale makers because it might be slightly easier to show you what I want to show you. So the size that you choose for these apertures is wholly dependent on what you need to put in them. You might want to macrame into them. You can do lace tatting or you can do any kind of knotting craft as well as your jewellery. It's a really useful little doohickey to create. I'm not sure if doohickey is an amazingly real word, but never mind. So I'm just going to put a little bit of extra warmth in just here. And I think I'm going to use number four on my bail making pliers. That's just slightly larger than the size I can achieve on my standard round nose pliers. So it's up to you. You can use an alternate if you wish to. So you can see we've got the round form up at the top, a straight line down, a 45 degree angle. We're going to take this wire 
upwards now. So if I pop those pliers in, hopefully it won't go too blurry. I'm going to wrap the wire all the way around and just cross that over that central nexus point. So you can see we're just looking to bring that back. It's more like a teardrop than a pure round shape. You can make that slightly smaller if you want a pure round shape, but I kind of like the aesthetic where it's just a little bit tapered, a little bit tapered. So I'm going to just pinch firmly just here, pull that wire down, put a little bit of extra heat into it. I'm just going to turn that sideways, remembering that I'm using the number four set of those bale making pliers. I'm going to rotate the wire around again. Now you can see just here, the first pass of wire is on top of the design. So I'm going to bring this next pass of wire on top of the design as well, like so. And I'm just going to show you that a little bit closer. It might go slightly out of focus, but I want you to see exactly what's going on. So if I just allow the light to move across those, you can see that the first pass of wire goes over the top comes around underneath and then goes over the top again. So a little bit of warmth again. If it helps you at this stage, we can add a little bit of hardness to these little pear shapes. They're just not quite a perfect round. Now what you may notice is I'm not squishing down anywhere that wires cross over. I'm only ever squishing down on a single pass of wire. I don't know if you can hear my flat pliers coming together but we're adding a little bit of strength. Sorry late trying to get things done before too much Canadian smoke. Hi from Seneca, Pennsylvania. Hello to you Deborah. I hope you're very well this evening, this afternoon or indeed this morning. I have no idea what time it is in Pennsylvania. I'm sorry. So we've got our first two loops of the three loops we're looking to create all ready to go. A little bit of warmth again. And I'm going to grab in my bale maker. So I always put a little dot on the number four because that's the one I tend to use most. And what we're going to do is just slide those up inside so that I can rotate the wire around them. So you can see where it sits on that. It's almost like a little angel form, actually. Pop those pliers into position. If I draw my hands around this side, hopefully I'll be able to get that last little scooch all the way around. So withdraw those pliers for now, put them out of the way. And you can see we've got our three almost pear drop, but basically round forms ready and willing to produce results. So you may need to practice this a little bit with your 18 gauge scrap wire just so that you get those into position. I think it's a really useful and very accessible design to use. So let's give that a bit of a squish. And what we're going to do now is to just grip the whole thing. What I might do actually is do that with the pliers. I'm going to take that tail of wire, feisty little thing, tail of wire is coming over the top of the design now. And I'm going to turn that away slightly so that it just goes over the top of that first of our loops that we've made. Now when we start bringing this wire around the core, so this is the little core or neck if you prefer that connects the single round form which forms this part of the connector and you, then you've got the three loops down at the base into which all of your other goodies can be connected. So what we're looking to do now is to take this tail around the core wire. Now what can happen is that as you pull this tail around the core, this starts getting pulled over. In order to prevent that, what we can do is grip that form very, very firmly with some flat facing pliers so we're not damaging the wire and start turning that wire across the back. And if you keep switching your grip ever so slightly, hit the camera, good job making sure that you keep a very firm grip on it, what you'll be able to do is create a coil around that core twice without any loss of wire from this direction. So give that a squish and a squeeze and we're going to take that last little section of wire across the back. Now we've got some scrap available. I'm going to show you something else with that in just a second. Let's tidy that down a moment. Flip to the back of the design and I'm just going to trim this away flush with the back of the core. 
give that a bit of a squish we have debbie joining us hello darling we've got a new debbie a deborah and a debbie welcome all of you it's definitely debbie day here at jesse james beads so you can see that we've got that little coil of wire going around the core or neck and if you need to you can just bring that down ever so slightly let me just show you that with the pliers the other way up just compress that slightly and tidy it away what we're going to do now is the same thing our wrapped loop at the other end at this stage you can add in your chain I haven't got a scrap to hand let me just grab a piece of this so I've got some paper clip chain now before you wrap your wrapped loop into position what you can do is add in the chain that goes around the back of the neck or however you want to use this design these also make really cute earrings especially if you want to make little drop earrings you don't have a chandelier form you can create up at the top a wrapped loop which you can pop directly into an earring finding and then you've got three apertures from which you can drop down even just threading spare and random beads onto head pins you can make really effective dangly earrings and talking of dangles that's one of our hmm, maybe future keywords that's coming up in a couple of weeks time just get your thinking caps on folks so let's support across this wrapped loop up at the top i've added in the chain that i want to go around the back of the neckline and i'm just going to push this all the way around until i've filled the gap as much as possible there's the gap has been filled so i'm going to make sure that that's super neat and tidy and then we've got this little tail of wire it's around about I'd say just over an inch so I'm going to grab again my round nose pliers and start by making a coil again I checked earlier that this is a nice safe flush cut so let's drive that around in a circular form you can see that started to loop I do need that to be a little bit tighter so I'm just going to push that over sorry for making the camera wobble and we're just going to rotate 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 until that coil sits push it down by hand and there you have your very own little connector I also it kind of looks a little bit like an angel maybe if you squint I don't know maybe that's just me seeing that so that's how you create your connector and how you can connect into the top now into this design I simply threaded through my beading wire my beading thread and then crimped it back towards the bead strand so if you're using bead strand it's really easy to accommodate that what I'm going to do I'm not sure if this is actually enough wire so let me just make a very rudimentary repeat of what we've just done let's turn that wire away make the world's tiniest little loop up at the top you would obviously as I said earlier we did that first loop about two and a half inches from the end and that gives us plenty of wire to wrap and create a coil I'm just using this tiny little off cut of wire because I'm thrifty and I hate waste so that will just be a demonstration piece so we're going to start exactly as we did with this piece pushing away at a 45 degree angle so if you need to check you've got your straight line and then you're halfway between the straight down and the completely left just went a bit too far there we are so let's grab those round nose pliers so this is kind of um repeating what we've done so if you joined us a little bit later this is the rapid fire version and what i'm going to do is draw the wire around like so i'm going to draw that over the top get my hand in the way obviously push it down so you can see it's exactly the same technique to make the design but smaller and this is a slightly rounder rather than pear drop shape now what I'm going to do is just trim away this section of chain like so and then I'm going to just use the other end if you wanted to add chain in and I'll show you the demonstration piece that I've got behind me with the heart chain every time you create a loop just here you would simply slide that piece of chain in before you make the next loop so in fact why don't I do that why don't I create some dangles like I was talking about that earring earlier it's a great way to use up scrap chain I feel a bit guilty just cutting this beautiful paper clip chain up into sections but I'll, I'll make it into earrings or something so I've added in my end of beading thread or looped on with my macrame thread whatever you want to do then we're going to make that second loop so bringing the wire around again on that circular form 
to create the central circle or just slightly almost kind of nearly pear drop shape <laughs> before we go any further we're going to add in the next piece of chain maybe i'll go for five links on the paper clip chain this time this is where i get nervous because my math skills are not great and it's very easy for me to miscount <laughs> you can count to five gem you can do it come on here we go let's pop in at the end link of our paper clip chain slide that down into the base like so so we've got five links and four links so we're going to now make that last circular and we'll take this one underneath i think just to balance it out a little bit all the way around and just allow that to sit up and out of the way so let's cut another four sections from this paperclip chain. I keep calling it paperclip chain. I have genuinely no clue if that is what it is supposed to be called. So let's open this up, pop that out of the way for now, into the scrap pot for later. And then we're going to add in that last, oh, what have you done with it? I've thrown it somewhere, silly woman. Pop that onto the last little loop. Make sure that you have got the right number of cuts the right number of links yep so there's four five and four and then we're going to repeat exactly what we did a moment ago but i'm going to do it upside down just because it's easier to see so let's grip that wire as it passes over that nexus point in the middle and then push that down and because i've left this i've made it very small because i wanted you to see that it could be made small you can just give that a very gentle squish if you need to. But also I wanted you to see that I was not wasting that last little bit of wire. So let's give that a squish and a squeeze. Let's support that oval shape that we were, not oval, sorry, the pear drop shape that we were looking to support. Draw that across the back. If I flip this over now, and I'll just bring that over the front. If I trim that down to a little bit shorter, around about an inch, I'd say, we've got enough wire here to close the link up at the top and to pop a small coil on the front so why don't i pop that coil on haven't trimmed it properly always key to do it when you see it or do it ahead of time so that you know things are nice and neat and tidy so this is the speed run version if you're just joining us now head back to the top of the video and you will see that there's a much slower and larger version so I'm just going to bring that coil all the way over and then press it down over the front of that design you can see it's a multi-purpose connector my paper link chain paper clip chain is eating itself that's no good there we go let's just drop that up to the side for a moment so well connected to me spelt this out let's make connectors together so this is my lovely i think i've forgotten the name <laughs> do you ever have that where your brain just goes completely blank it's a clover clover connector i'm going to bring you back up to the other camera if my mouse would like to wake up hello still here still as bonkers as ever so with this one I didn't add in anything afterwards. I created the design linking the correct chain in in order that it appears on the section here. So on these ones, you'll see that I didn't add the coil. It's just the wire has been coiled around neatly. And you've got those three different colors, the three different lengths. The length difference on the chain cascade necklace is an inch between each and on the piece that i showed you on the board which i'll just grab up for you again it was more like three quarters of an inch and this one has the spiral just over the center i will take photos of these and pop them on the board um, and then i'll pop them in the comments later so hopefully that is of some benefit to you i do love the jesse james beads summer bead blast because it gives me a nudge to try something different maybe it's something that you hadn't thought about doing maybe it's something that you didn't even think you needed in your life well jesse james beads do that to me have you booked up yet for summer camp i have i'm going to be there so is my little friend my little friend turbo i'm also going to be teaching another project at summer camp places are selling out really quickly so have a look if that's something that you fancy being involved with get yourself involved with it 
Also, if you haven't checked out the monthly bead box, the Magical Mystery Bead Box, comes through every month. I adore these because it gives you, again, another nudge towards creativity. Maybe it's outside your comfort zone. Maybe it's something that you've been longing for will turn up in your box. It's a fabulous idea. Previous boxes are available on the website as well. So... I hope that you have enjoyed yourself today. I know that I have. I'm going to love you and leave you. I might just finish off this teeny tiny earring and take a photograph of that as well. I'll pop it into the comments on the Facebook Live video and then I'll send a photo over to our fantastic team and they can pop one when it goes up to YouTube as well. You guys do take care of yourself. Mwah! It's been lovely to spend the day with you. I look forward to seeing you again very, very soon. Take care. Bye for now.